Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, October 27, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a Time for Change call tonight at 9 p.m. on this line. We can move effortlessly forward. Try not to be, try not, do not try so hard when the road gets rocky and, tum and tumultuous. Take a little breather and relax by the river. Your greatest life is like a leaf floating down a gentle river, letting it carry you weakly into the ocean, effortlessly manifesting your dreams. To just, just throw in your paddle and be free. Don't fight the current. Does it take courage to fully be alive? Courage is mastery of fear, not the absence of fear. As I've said, you, will, you, you can't have courage without fear. First comes fear, then comes courage. I thank God for my handicaps, for through them I have found myself, my work, and my God, Ellen Keller. In this life, we don't get to choose who we love, why we love them, or how to avoid feeling pain when they have to leave us. You may find that only through opening up into your feelings that you can experience truly being alive. You may realize that one, one negative feeling continuously repeated can dominate and destroy an entire life. One negative feeling continuously repeated can dominate and destroy an entire life. Understand the importance of having childlike playfulness, not taking anything too seriously, and entertain the simple joy of being alive. I know how to welcome the feeling of pain, honor its teaching, and then understand what it takes to let it go. Many of us may have discovered that if we don't choose to be with and face our pain, we cannot honestly leap out of bed the next morning filled with real joy. It's been brought to many of our attentions that this one life contains a huge bag of mixed experiences, which can sometimes feel like lying naked in a bed full of thorny, beautiful roses. It can be emotionally painful, physically uncomfortable, and yet the closer we are to it, the more we can smell the sweet healing fragrance wafting through the air. So my advice is, is, is simple. Each day, when you still have your family here, healthy and alive, is truly a precious time to be treasured. Learn how to love your friends and family, accepting them exactly as they are. Appreciate the unique bed of thorny roses you've been gifted. And know that if they are really annoying, you don't have to continue laying on them. This life is a school of learning in a way to respect and honor ourselves, enjoying each moment in the very precious and short time we have here. There is a very sacred and spiritual journey we are each on. The more often we can see this, and appreciate our lessons, the easier and juicier life becomes. Love without courage and wisdom is sentimentality. Courage without love and wisdom is foolhardiness. Wisdom without love and courage is cowardice. The one who has love, courage, and wisdom moves the world. The one who has love, courage, and wisdom moves the world. Amon Hennessy. 
The courage to live life is not something we were born with. We enter into this world with curiosity, innocence, and openness, and we develop courage along the way. Courage is slowly grown within by overcoming each one of our anxieties, insecurities, and fears. Courage is like a muscle that we must build, grow, and mature as we experience life and age. If we don't permit courage to develop during our lifetimes, we will feel dominated and devoured by this world. There must be a willingness to be strong and vulnerable at the same time. It is in our flexibility and strength that we can hold our ground for the heart to fully open. It is only from an open heart that we reach the deepest fearless resource of our being and can bask in the divine enlightening energy of our souls. An interesting fact about the word courage is that it comes from the old French word courage, which means heart. Innermost feelings and inner strength. So courage, the word, is that it comes from the old French word courage, which means heart, innermost feelings, and inner strength. When we are in touch with our heart, we feel that we can undertake anything. Real courage is just like a beating heart that is strong, consistent, resilient, and yet also soft and squishy. A healthy heart is not hard, guarded, and tough as nails. A good heart loves life and recognizes that life is not a have to, but a massive get to. The heart is always giving us this opportunity to be alive, deeply alive, right now, so don't miss out on it. This life is an amazing experience that we all have been temporarily gifted to enjoy. It takes real mastery over one's mind to live a truly empowered and awesome life. This level of mind mastery requires total transparency, which is the last place we would look to find courage. An open, vulnerable approach has the willingness to allow every micro-truth to shine through. This unveiled nakedness is the great secret to developing the courage and strength that we need to get through life's rough times when they arrive, when we have nothing to hide, we have nothing to lose. It doesn't matter so much what the outcome is as much as the exploration of love along the way. If you live long enough, it's guaranteed that one day you will need this transparent secret to find unstoppable courage. So you may as well start practicing now. You might have noticed that not all human beings you meet are truly alive. It takes a very brave soul to be vulnerable enough to show up and live life fully. Many people pretend they are enjoying their time here, yet when you gaze into their eyes, they look like and act like they are dead and sleepwalking through this life, thinking themselves to be safe, free from pain, danger, or harm's way. They whittle away their time feeling lazy and avoiding life challenges. You can see each potential reverent moment of their life slips through their fingers like water. And it feels like they wouldn't notice it or really care if everything suddenly was gone. When we face our fears and sit with our pain, we harness the simple energy inside to be ruthless with our fear, vibrantly creative in our approach and enjoying the sweetness of being alive. We can then show up emotionally for others be honest and open with our families, fully embrace the changes and challenges of our loved ones, and enjoy how easy everything flows and changes. With courageous eyes, we can see how everyone and everything is our teacher. We harness the ability to be foolish and risky enough to really go for our dreams. 
we naturally start to invest our energy in visualizing an amazingly bright, flawless future and stop judging ourselves for whatever shortcomings we were told we had. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Ambrose Redmond. One of the greatest accomplishments we can make in a lifetime is to never take anyone or anything, never take anyone or anything for granted. Our lives are always balancing on the edge of a thin dime, and everything can be taken away in a flash. It's essential to consistently practice appreciation for what we have and express this loving communication with everyone in our world. We must choose to become appreciation experts, remaining positive and supportive with those we care deeply about and cherish. When times are cold and dark for friends or family, it is our job to give them the best love we can give. We may not realize it now, yet the love that we share ends up being the same love we will have to give back to ourselves when our life feels like it's coming to an end. During this precious life, we are guaranteed the most outrageous climax when it's all over. We can enjoy the journey much more if we learn one small skill to stop holding on to our past pain. The negative voices, arguments, criticisms, fault finding must be released if we are going to find emotionally neutral terms with ourselves. To do this, we must practice grabbing hold of the reins of our mind and train it to obey our every wish and desire. We must choose to show the mind that we are the boss and mainly and main authority in charge to be respected. When the mind wanders down that deep, dark, and lonely alley towards fear, we simply give it a little kick and turn up the love and inner light inside our heart. Our mind is the designer and creator of our entire life, and only when it's focused in a positive, healthy direction are we then destined to manifest truly wonderful things. Observe and know that what you see is the wheel of Maya, mind. Maya, mind. Moving round and round, always changing, never stopping for a moment. Know this and know that there can be no failure. Know this and understand that your emotions are but dancing chemicals of up and down, on and off, temporary and permanent. There is no failure if one lives in truth, simplicity, love. Do not feel embarrassed, for you have not failed. You do not know the final outcome, but in the present, live in the present, that is all one can do, Bobby J. Now you may find really refreshing is that something that's really refreshing is that there is a natural healing mechanism installed in the software of our DNA, which pushes us in the direction of constant growth, healing, and survival. Our physical bodies are designed to automatically heal any cuts or bruises that we have. Our minds over time tend to naturally forget and diminish mental and emotional wounds from our past. Unless we tend to keep reenacting and playing out those negative emotional states, they will naturally heal on their own accord. When we are left alone, out in nature in a safe, quiet environment without any media or social contact with society, taking in only healing positive information, eating only clean, raw, organic food in a matter of 90 days or less, all, all of our mental, emotional, and even physical problems will all be gone. It is simply nature at work within our DNA. 
which knows how to naturally replenish, restore, and return the body-mind mechanism back to its natural state. It's like the tiny mustard seed already knows how to establish roots, grow up against gravity, reach towards the sun, and one day bear fruit and seeds for future generations. Our DNA was designed with this effortless program to heal our entire mind-body organism. Since many of us cannot afford to pack up and leave our lives for several months at a time, we must perpetually think positively about ourselves, our lives, and our future. Now, you might hear this constant, subtle war inside yourself, all of us, in the form of an attempt to focus and refocus the mind in a positive, creative direction. Past subconscious wounding keeps bubbling up until it is healed, and we are like sponges who are absorbing negative thinking patterns that we unknowingly don't see spewing from others around us. It is the law of the universe, garbage in and garbage out. We cannot afford to dwell in any negative thought patterns as they all will manifest something in our health, in our relationships, or in our finances. By simply bringing awareness to only having sacred empowered and empowering positive healing thoughts perpetually flowing in, we must have sacred healing experiences coming out. When When I look inside and see that I am nothing, that is wisdom. When I look outside and see that I am everything, that is love. And between these two, my life turns. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax our bodies. Head to toe, inside and out. Completely, naturally. And understand that you're not the body. We're not the body. We're not this personality. We're not the character. We're not the name. We're not the look. We are the God within. So then you understand that body you're in is like a magnet, super powerful magnet. And it draws and attracts everything, every thought, every negative, every stress, every fear, every worry, every anxiety everything and you ever notice that well maybe maybe some don't maybe they they don't recognize it but that you you begin when when you worry stress and fear and the body is stressed out and the body is stressed out most of the time you feel heavy and not so much the body that you, you feel. It's just there is an energy of, of, of weight, heaviness, where it feels more draining just to navigate day to day, where you feel tired a lot. And you do. You feel, it feels like you're carrying something or dragging something. But you look and there's nothing there. And then you start noticing as you relax the body and you face face these fears, anxieties, and worries. And you talk with them. You determine why they're there. What's the root of this fear? When we aren't so attached to the body that we believe we're the body, Then we suffer. When we begin to realize choosing on our own to go within to discover the fact that you are not the body, you are the God within it. There's a lightness that happens. The heaviness leaves. And you're focused, and and this is, it's imperative, you're focused on your breath.
And all that mind chatter that we all have 24-7, every bit of it is gone. Some of us don't recognize it. But that's why you're focused on your breath and you, you're moved into the now and the body relaxes. Body's not stressful in the now. It is only stressful in the yesterday or the tomorrow. It's never really stressful in the now. And you can visualize just about anything you would care to as far as relaxing that body you're in. Now, we've all, certain extents in this life, have naturally experienced a moment of relaxation. Where you're just, you're not thinking. You've left the mind and the ego and the subconscious mind alone. You're not thinking. You're not worrying. It's all back. It's gone. And to know this body, which we, all the gods that we are, we know them inside and out. We know them down to the quantum core. Isn't it amazing that we feel so separated and that we don't believe that we are the God, but therefore how do we know the body? Well, we go and we talk to strangers and they tell us what's wrong and how do we, what's wrong with our body. And when you look inside the body, you see these, they're lights and they're circular and they go from the base of the spine all the way up to the top of the head. Now, these are etheric spiritual, like we are, the gods we are, etherically spiritual. So you can't, you can't pick them up like a solid block of wood. And these are called chakras. And the word chakra means wheel. And since we have these etheric spiritual wheels of light, chakras, this is what we flow through. This is what we connect with. This is how we, that some of us have begun to learn that this is how we begin to understand the master of the body, how we heal the body of anything. We flow through the entire body. We, we're, we're connected to all the emotions of this body, all the organics, all the organs, all the blood flow, all the cells, all of everything. And we never will discover that unless we go within and discover, open the door with the golden handle, walk into the room, and embrace the God that you are. Because that's where you'll find the God that you are, deep within you. So when our bodies are relaxed, we view things much differently. We take in a lot more. We notice a lot more. Clearly, we take more time. We're not in a hurry. We're not forcing things. We relax. And we're focused on our breath and we're in the now. And the now is all we really have. When you discover genuinely through your heart mind that you are a God and you accept that without question through the heart mind. Everything in your existence will immediately shift, change. How you viewed things with different perspectives, you will no longer view the same way. So when you still the mind and the ego, which means you leave them alone and the subconscious mind, you literally are in bliss. You know that the soul that you are that enters this body is the heaven. You know that it powers up the body that you're in. Everything comes online, starts functioning. 
and being consciously aware, which means that we are of the high, we consciously aware that we're of the highest, of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. So doesn't it make sense that you're the God in that body? You're consciously aware. You're the soul, the heaven, the body is the earth, you're heaven on earth, literally, and that every step you take is paradise. You're creating paradise. Not only that, you're shining your light, your God force love light energy, 360 degrees, nonstop, blasting everything that you come in contact with, with your love, your pure, deep, eternal love. You're blasting everything. And so all of us, eventually on this planet, will become consciously aware that we are God. And we will glow. And you can go out in outer space. Let's just say, you know, a couple hundred miles. And you can see that this planet glows. And not only that, but you'll look around at all the lights in the surrounding universe, and all of them will pale in comparison to the light that we are in this planet. The pure, deep, eternal love. We know that there are, are parts of us as the gods that we are that are asleep. As we travel through this endless journey, slowly but surely, they will wake up. So they're with us, but they don't communicate. They're not in the meditation directly because they're asleep. And the other parts of us, the gods that we are, that are awake, consciously aware, to a certain extent. Now, we communicate. It doesn't matter if it's a billion light years away. We're one. We, we're constantly communicating. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we know this, because we're too wrapped up in the physical in the material world on this planet. So these are all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And they come in the Googleplexes. One Googleplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. This includes all the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. Send the Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, El Moria, Abedentia, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua, all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, Agartha, and beneath earth. All of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. All the off-worlders, galactics, and celestials. As far as the light energy beings on this that, that come into this planet with the eyes that we have with these bodies, we don't we only see one percent of one is. Then they come in shapes, color, sizes, forms, configurations of which we've never seen. Now we're familiar with just a small grouping. Fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees. Trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood. And we, at times, we have it. We have interacted with fire, right? Water, wood, air, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the whale, the Pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur. Now the galactic offworlders and celestials, again. Over a thousand species travel through the solar system every day. Trillions throughout the universes every day. But we're only familiar with just a fraction, a smidgen of them. This is the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, feline, the Reticuli, Anunnaki, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion, 
And this particular group has been assisting us in our evolution. Enlightenment, ascension, and freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. The archangels, they vibrate at a different frequency than we do. They're a civilization that does. We don't see them like we see each other. But we do meet with them. We interact with them. Sometimes we don't know it. We, we just have a nice feeling, we just, but we don't know it outright. Other times we know it. We interact. Interaction ends. After the interaction, you say to yourself, that was just not a regular meeting. That was, I, that was an angel. And that is bliss. Now, they have the same message they deliver to us in just numerous ways. And is that, isn't it absolutely magna glorious to be alive in these bodies? To be able to taste, to, to smell, to laugh, to cry, to eat, to taste. To breathe. And it is, and it is bliss. Now they can surround any one of us at any one time into tens of thousands, or if you wish, tens of millions. Because of the vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. And all you got to do is ask, they will. And that is bliss. And he said, the masters, they have mastered physical, ascended into physical, mastered physical, and sent out of physical, hold pure consciousness, God form. We have ascended into physical, are now mastering physical, creating our experiences to perfect our creation. And we're all gathered arm in arm, hand in hand, so to speak, from all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. In the Google Plexus. Some awake, some not. We're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity and humbleness, bliss, Joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one. And we're all love. And we're all God. And our God force, love, light, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify. And it continues to expand. We form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This circle of light emanates from the kingdom of God, the God source, within each and every single one of us. We begin to ascend above the planet, and we're flooding this planet 24-7. On it, in it, above it, and below it, with the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. All like the highest supreme value in the universe. We continue to ascend above the planet, and we come in contact with this massive ocean of glitter. It's everywhere, flashing, trillions of multicolored lights. It's, just, it's like this super huge ballroom glass ball reflecting light, trillions times more intense, flashing everywhere continuously colors we've never seen before and so we're curious always so we look at the reflective points and we notice that these are little tiny perfectly as microscopic mirrors 
So we entered that and we discovered that all of us, hundreds of millions of us consciously aware, are communicating with each other. Not only in humanoid form, but all forms of life. Constantly communicating. We're learning and, and teaching. Teaching and learning are both. Is it possible to learn something from a blade of grass? Yes. Is it possible to learn something from a leaf? Yes. Or the sky or the air? Yes. This is our endless journey of constantly interacting. Parts of the one God as we all are. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that we are the power of healing. We eventually will heal these bodies better than anything possibly could. We are then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all of our omnipotent power strength and resolve. We're then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that from head to toe inside now we are literally encased and imbued with a white fire armor. Nothing like on this planet. We are protected 24-7, always have been. No demon possession, no attachments, no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. And they can't come near us because if they did, they would vaporize. They can't hold their low frequency. Can't be around our frequency of the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest eternal love. They can't. Ever. But only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, consciously or unconsciously, through anger, revenge, hatred, fear, envy, greed, hurriedness, worry, you will lower your vibrational frequency low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor. Enough so to allow lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then there's a lot of possibilities. Attachments, demon possession, many different things with the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. Now if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light. The first part of this column that we created to remind us all is the purple transmuting flame. We can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are gone permanently. No more. Following immediately after that is the second part of the column of light, the violet ray. We created this column of light to remind the soul that we can bring in the violet ray. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies once were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony of the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden white, pink light. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that the gods within these bodies were the sun, sunlight. The sun sets and the sun rises, the rain and the rainbows, the sky and the clouds, the trees and the forest, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the mountains. Everything. We are everything. Everything is us. 
So the next time you view a sunset or a sunrise or a snowfall or a starry lit night sky, and you look at it and you say, isn't that beautiful? And you're missing the true understanding. The God within you is the beauty. That sunset, that's you, the God that you are. That ocean front, that's you, the God that you are. The majesty, the divinity, the divineness, the, the gloriousness is you. Always has been, always will be, ever beyond and forever. There is no separation. There never was, never will be, ever beyond and forever. We continue to ascend above the planet. And some of us step outside our physical form and hover effortlessly above it. If we're carrying physical form. Why do we do this? Because we can. We come into full contact with this massive crystalline light tower. We all created this tower. It is larger than this solar system. It's massive and beyond. In the center of the column, we see this massive oblong sphere with this golden white bowl of light and numerous rings of light. The golden white bowl of light And all of them, the golden white ball light, all of them are sending off this massive cloud of electric. It looks electrified, it's sparkling, and it, it absorbs into us, and it's like a warm embrace that never ends. The golden white ball of light is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. And then comes gratitude and peace and well-being and joy, and bliss, and happiness, and gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. Endless. And we discover that it is a reflection of the gods we are. Always has been. Will be ever beyond and forever. Great wealth, great abundance. It is who and what we are, the gods that we are. Now at the top of this column, we designed this to the golden ocean, can come cascading down 24-7, 360 degrees, as it's doing right now, as it's flooding all of us, all life, the highest supreme value of the universe on this planet, on it, in it, above it, and below it. It doesn't end. And it is the purest of the purest, purest, deep, eternal love. It is what we all are, the gods that we are. Now, we are all drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, drops of the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere, it sets center circle. We all created this sphere moving towards four years ago. It holds over 1,600 of our meditations in perpetual motion. This is massive. Hundreds of millions of consciously aware light energy beings focused on this little planet, on the outer reaches of the Milky Way galaxy, in its total liberation, complete cleansing, purification, uplifting all vibrational frequencies into the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Non-stop. Do these meditations dissipate? Do they go away? Do they weaken? No, they do the opposite. They're constantly intensifying and expanding. They're constantly flooding us all. And they're all reflections of the gods that we are within these bodies. It's absolutely, truly, miraculous, divine, magna glorious. Do the opposite of what didn't work before and believe in the power of silence. The more you can relax and just be 
the more abundance of life's rich experiences you will receive. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
take an easy breath in through the nose. And an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. For today, investigate this experience called breathing all day long. Keep bringing your mind back to the breath, following it wherever it flows. Just be with it. If it's shallow, deep, fast, or sluggish, don't try to change your breath in any way. Simply connect to it. Feel it from your heart as if you're making friends with it. Notice how it changes when you merge with it and allow yourself to become it fully. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and fall and morning. And we will be back here Thursday, October 28th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. And we will be here later tonight at 9 p.m. for the Time for Change call. 